Hello, Phil Morris, uh, the Time and Time Photographer here, with a uh, quick uh, little video tip on the uh, new CS5 Refine Edges command. And what I'm going to do here is I've got this uh, uh, image that I've brought into Photoshop from Lightroom, and I am going to try to pull her out of this black background, maybe because I want to put her on a different background, maybe I have a brick wall or something like that. But what I want to do is take the quick selection tool and quickly select her and get as much of uh, her hair as we can give it a moment to think about it and then we're going to go ahead and do refine edge let me uh, bring that over here now for for this what we want to do is we want to get all of her hair because if you uh, remember, uh, she had a bunch of uh, really interesting flyaway hair here uh, that was being lit by the light. And I want to pull that out as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a smart radius. And you're going to be tempted to just go ahead and run this all the way up maximum. And in this case, it's not that big of a deal. But in some cases, if you're talking about short, uh, fine hairs, uh, you won't want to do that. It also depends on how uh, how much resolution your image has. In this case, what I want to do is I want to turn on the show radius, and that's 250 pixels wide on that radius there. So 250 pixels works fine on this image. Then what I want to do is click this button here, which is the refine radius, and we're going to go ahead and paint around the edges here and try to find all those little hairs. Alright, and a little bit more through there just in case. Alright, now you notice that the uh, show radius is still showing all this that we've painted around here. So if we turn that off, and we can we're doing it on black, we can do it on an overlay, um, on white, everything looks a little gray, but that's fine. Um, so let's do it back on black. And in this case, there's no reason to decamp decontaminate the uh, colors because you would want to use that if you had a green screen or if there was a, a particular color cast. In this case, it's black and white, so it's not that big of a deal. And we hit OK. Wait a moment while it thinks about it. And the refined mask is done. And we've got a selection here. Now, one thing that I could have done is gone ahead and told it to uh, give me a new layer with that uh, selection already. Uh, uh, taken and, and the mask but in this case I didn't want to have two copies so I just did the regular selection and then I'm going to say add layer mask and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and click on the layer mask and what that's going to do is it's going to show us how good of a mask we've done and what I want to do is take a look around the edges here and if you notice there's a few spots here where it's gray and that's because uh, since she had blonde hair it thinks that um, she uh, uh, we needed to mask some of that out so what I'm going to do is uh, take a uh, white brush here and paint out some of those little streaks I know it might be kind of difficult for you to see those on there but it will make a difference space bar move around all right that looks that looks pretty good and now what I want to do is create a new layer and I want to fill that layer with uh, black that gets us back to normal and it looks like we've got a pretty decent mask there now what we can do is uh, if we wanted to uh, play around a little bit we can take do a pattern 
and we'll just do this wild pattern here. Let it think about it a moment. And as you can see, that mask turns out to work pretty decent. The big thing uh, to remember is to make sure that you do the option click on your mask and take a real close look at the, uh, the edges, especially around the hair, to make sure that you're not dropping out things that uh, you don't need to drop out. Well, that's my tip for uh, today. Once again, my name is Phil Morris, the Time and Time Photographer. Thank you for watching.